today, so for sophomores and younger, uh, 2020 and younger grads. Royce Wellhefer, uh, been here as a senior recruiting coach for the past uh, 10 years, helping thousands of families through this recruiting process. Before I came to NCAA, I was a college coach. I spent 20 years as a uh, Division One, Division Two, and NAI levels. I played, um, played uh, overseas after, played in college, three sports. Um, so sports has been able to take me in a lot of directions with uh, career as well as travel. And um, from those experiences, that's what I want to be able to pass on to you as you navigate your process. Your game plan here today is going to be um, your college softball facts, so going over some things um, that are the tool of the rules and um, just briefly touching on those. Reaching, um, dive into what does it look like to research schools, also give you some insight into what college coaches look for and um, what you can be doing at this point. So those are the areas. I hope you have a pen and paper to take some notes. And again, if you have questions along the way, go ahead and use that uh, that chat box up there at the top. So just, uh, reviewing some of these facts, if you haven't had a chance to touch on the Softball 101 webinar, uh, remember, for your student athlete, for you as a student athlete, there's over 1,600 college uh, opportunities to play softball. Um, but in mind, too, that the top-level programs will make decisions early, and some can make um, verbal offers as early as freshmen in high school. And to keep in mind that uh, the coaches do have rules. So the one in Division II have rules they have to follow. I will uh, send afterwards a follow-up here. Or you can simply Google NCAA College Bound Student Athlete Guide, and there's uh, the rules. I believe the page is uh, 24 to 27, unless they have updated with pages. Leaves you as a student athlete um, that you need to be proactive. Okay, you need to be the one engaged in this whole recruiting process because there's not rules uh, as far as what you as a student athlete can do in contacting coaches. Um, to be active, you know, one of the things is to look at schools, research schools, and you've got some great helps here with uh, NCSA. You your uh, My College tab. Under the My College tab, that's going to show activity of, of coaches who have viewed your profile, following you. Um, you can utilize this star here to be able to indicate, and maybe it's moved over on the other side on some other pages too, but you can indicate interest by highlighting those stars and just clicking on it, it's an on-off button. That'll um, alert coaches, um, but that's really not the only thing what you'd want to do. So I um, want to take a look at more details and, and go out the school as far as what they have to offer. So you select the school, you can go on their page. That's where you map of where it's located. I'll give you these tabs here of um, being able to look at their academics, admissions, um, other details on the school here. And then it'll give you schools nearby. So <laughs> this certainly is a huge help. It's a uh, you know, cut here, and it's just going to be a huge help for you to find this information all in one place. And then what you'd want to do is uh, Google the school name. And by the school name, um, you know, put softball at the end of it. So in this case, Berea College Softball, um, that's going to be able to be the quickest, easiest way to go to that uh, softball page and be able to look at their roster, um, coaches under the more probably, you know, best information, news of the items. But the rosters, I think, are going to be the most helpful item, uh, initially anyway. Because you go to the roster, you want to take a look at a couple things. You want to see where the girls from. In this, uh, mostly from Ohio, be in Ohio school, um, some Michigan, but then also outliers. You know, Indiana, uh, New York, Wisconsin, um, Idaho. This be a good sign if you're not a state player. You know, here, this uh, school, this roster has 
Oscar in many different places. Um, you don't want to take a look at how many do they have on the team. Is it uh, average amount or is it above average? Sort by positions. This is underlined at the top of the header here. So this is a good way. Uh, that's what I did. Good way to be able to see, well, how many pitchers do they carry or how many catchers, depending on what position you are. Sometimes allow you to sort by the class. That can be helpful too. So if you're a freshman or a sophomore, then you could see how many do they have in your grad class that would be leaving that you would be coming in to replace. So you a lot just from that roster. To get a little bit more information, what you'd want to do is choose one of those gals and then um, uh, select the, the person and what, their, what was in their high school background. Um, and so here's an example of an NAI player that you take a look at, you know. So in other words, do you have um, things like this about your resume? Using is going to be one of those top skills that the uh, coaches will look for with skill with position players. But sure, um, you know, that's going to be actually the most wanted position, the most requests that we get for from our coaches, and then also catchers and shortstop. Um, another thing to note that college coaches recruit good students, so do the best in the academic part. Say here in this uh, uh, information on this background, you know, it uh, talks about this player being a uh, sport athlete, a basketball player, and then also even which uh, club team that they played soft with. But some of the hitting, six and honors from high school. It also is real helpful to be able to see what their major is, depending if you're looking to major in something that's a little more um, niche, then you can see, hey, is there somebody that also is uh, majoring in, in, for instance, engineering or uh, co, you know, something that's a little bit more in depth. When you come to these websites, uh, you'll notice sometimes they'll have a, a general recruit uh, tab, or sometimes on their softball tab, they might have like recruit questionnaires, be recruited, recruit form. These are good to fill out for college coaches because that'll put you on their recruiting list, and from there, the coaches then can uh, be um, information like camp invites and so on and so forth. As to what you can be doing at this point, um, make sure that profile is finished, you know, and then from there keep it updated. Make sure you got video on there. Make sure you got record of your uh, grades, meaning either report cards or a transcript. The other thing is that you would set proper preferences so that you would select states, make visits, that you're open to different sizes, levels, um, types of college. Um, because, you know, they're not going to be paying for visits until you're a senior or in Division II cases as a junior. But generally, those are not always paid for with your, um, okay? So keep that in mind when you are. I mean, it's always nice if you're a person that lives in the north to, to want to go to a school, let's in Florida or out on the west coast where it's warm. Realistic, you know, if you're looking at rosters and and those uh, girls on the teams that you're looking at um, are from in state, then you know that's just not realistic. And another thing could be if you're looking at uh, uh, you know further away, and your team, your travel team during the summer doesn't even play out of the then then it's not going to be as realistic that uh, you need to be doing is continually looking at schools, research schools, uh, check them out uh, as we just went through. As far as when you get contact from a college coach, you need to respond to the schools that contact you. So they email you, make sure you respond back and reach out to the schools that you have interest in. So you don't have to wait for a college coach to contact you first. You certainly can reach out to schools where you have interest in.
hope that's clear on those two. But up in that upper right where you have your center, that you can see when college coaches are contacting you. I certainly want to respond because um, ever so often I will get um, emails or calls from college coaches and say, you know, Joyce, so-and-so, we've reached out to them. They, uh, we don't hear back from them. They contacted us first, and now we don't hear back from them. So be responsive. This is your uh, profile and making sure you have as much information on here as college coaches can for evaluating you. Um, I was saying your grades, your skills video, statistics, your contact information, those are going to be very inf um, important because if a Division One or Division Two coach would be interested in you, the way they would be able to contact you would be through your co coach, so your travel coach or your high school coach. And make post video that shows who's hitting. You know, look at the guidelines. You can do YouTube videos. So depending on what membership you have of how many videos we might edit for you or if any, but you can put up YouTube videos. And that's in your statistics, like your batting average, uh, home runs, and uh, pitch statistics from both high school and travel team if you're able to get that. And the way to do that is edit profile, athletic tab. You can edit these then. You put your over there, the edit button will pop up. And blue button here for add edit stats. The that is also here is a uh, right below your jersey number where you could post the schedule via file. And it's for the travel team and tournaments that you play in. Make sure those are available. Uh, another place you could put the schedule and uh, dates of tournaments would be up under the events tab. Is that how the college coaches will be able to come and watch? A thing with the preferences, as I mentioned, on you know, again, be realistic. Make sure you're um, have yes and maybes and maybe even some no's, you know, because the schools are in states where it's too far away, too cold, what have you. But um, stick with yeses. These should be states that you would be willing to go and visit on. Your own. Schools in these states, and you also have with your divisions in your, you know, be open here on the enrollment, the college setting. Now, if you select different um, type colleges like military, Christian, historically black women, and that's going to give you additional uh, opportunities of schools to look at. So then be, um, coaches want to hear from you. They don't know you're interested in them unless you tell them. All right. So it's important that you would um, start emailing and write personal emails to coach. What do I mean by personal email? That would tell us that they're letting the coaches know why you're interested in the school, what you like about their school, so that you would uh, express that and be specific in those areas. Email NAI schools or the two-year schools or Division threes. Those three division levels can uh, back to you. So in cases, ask questions and respond back. And then build rapport with these coaches at these levels, Division three, NAI, junior college, by short emails and uh, following when they're in season, how the things are going. Don't be all about yourself. You know, be interested in the whole school. It doesn't always have to be about softball. It can be about their uh, fall sports if they're in playoffs still or winter sports um, up at the school or something on campus speaker-wise. You know, um, coaches want students who want to be at their school. They need to have genuine interest in those schools. Um, your levels with your vision one in Division two schools, remember that's going to be one-sided, right? Because you can only communicate with them. They can't communicate uh, personally back. If those college coaches are interested in you, the way you can get around that rule is they can contact your travel coach, your high school coach, and let them know. And you suggest um, to these coaches what they could do is, you know, call the coach and say, hey, we're really interested in uh, see, make sure she gives us a call, here's a number that uh, is a good way to get in touch with us. You know, if they offer that, make sure you do follow up. 
it's a, a great sign. And, again, it's going to be one-sided. You're the one that has to keep in touch with them. And sometimes that can be difficult. It's, uh, you're not getting replies and responses. So uh, that's why being a, a younger uh, student athlete, it's important that you would be in touch with uh, schools at all level types. So what you be doing then? Um, a main thing is that you need to have the ownership of this whole recruiting and your softball uh, future. It should be mom or dad doing the coach communication. It should be you. College coaches want to hear directly from you. Also, aware of your social networks, um, your Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever else is out there. Coaches will look at those and use them. You to your advantage. Follow your schools. Follow your coaches. Uh, that way you can keep, keep up. Um, you're a social network user. That way you keep up with uh, the latest from them. Making academics a priority, that's going to allow for you to have the maximum options and opportunities at colleges. So, and, you know, do a good job and be on top of your academics. We're in this together, and we are here for you. Um, just want to point out up here in your upper right with a picture there, that you can find uh, your account information, your membership information, payments if needed need to get to that. Uh, more importantly, here's our contact uh, phone number and hours. The office is open. And um, if you do have the membership where you get the coaching session, a one-on-one -on -one with uh, one of uh, our softball recruiting coaches, take advantage of that. If you select here, it'll tell you, you know, where or under your membership, it'll tell you what you get. It'll take you to a calendar to see open times. But any questions um, at this point that uh, anybody would have as we wrap up? If not, you can uh, drop off the call, and then uh, I will be emailing afterwards with information and follow-up. Any think of anything at the... not, you can go ahead and drop off. But I thank everybody for participating and